This is Internet Marketing. Brought to you by Site Visibility at sitevisibility.com. This is Internet Marketing. Now, before we start today, we'd like to encourage anyone looking for help with their digital marketing to get in touch with Site Visibility. Whether you have a burning digital marketing question or you're looking for an agency to work with, they would love to hear from you. So give them a call, plus four four one two seven three seven three three four three three, or you can fill out the form on sitevisibility.co.uk slash contact. Alternatively, you can talk to either Scott or Sean via the live chat function on the site. They'd be happy to help. Today I'm joined by Jack Madalena, one of the directors at VR Craftworks. Jack, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very, very well. Let's start off. Um, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and VR mm-hmm. Craftworks. I'm Jack Madalena. I am one of the co-directors for a company called VR Craftworks, an immersive agency based down in Brighton. And we've been doing this a bit longer than we would like to admit. Now, uh, VR, that's a virtual reality. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're talking about the immersive industry. Are they the same thing? They are pretty much, aren't they? Well, it sort of fits into multiple different mediums. So the immersive industry, there's multiple mediums within there. So there's virtual reality, augmented reality, 360 degrees, like videos and photos, yeah. as well as mixed reality. And there's some other subgenres off off that. Yeah. We as an agency cover all of those. We've actually expanded since not just doing a VR agency. We've actually expanded into multiple different mediums within the immersive bra- bracket. Yeah. And we're particularly interested in this show how uh, the immersive industry or the the immersive um, experience can be useful to people, sort of online marketing. Just before we start, how did you get into the immersive industry? What's your story? So it's an interesting one. It started back in sort of 2005 with uh, me and my father in our basement when we were playing around with cool, innovative tech. Um, So we started off building shutter glasses before sort of 3D TVs was really a popular thing and getting objects to pop out of screens yeah. to building VR caves with projectors on, onto the walls. And we were actually a, a part of this online bulletin board called YouTubes Bulletin Board. Um, and it was all where all the immersive geeks washed up on all around the world. And we started building VR head, headsets uh, out of cardboard shoe boxes. Then it started getting more improved with wires coming out everywhere. <laughs> Imagine something like Robocop, really. Yeah, yeah. And then at that point, um, somebody on the forum went, you know what, let's do a whip around and we all put money together and let's buy some material in bulk. And we said, yeah, let's do that. And then a week later, he had a meeting with the guy who founded Doom, the the game. Um, And he launched a Kickstarter because he told him to. And that actually founded the Oculus Rift. So to this day, the forum is still alive. You can go see what what we said all, all on there. And at that point, we didn't really know anything about maths producing of headsets yeah. so we went down the software route um, and we've been doing it ever since and sort of sort of established the company in 2014 and we've been doing it ever since and we've worked with the likes of google the google sdk in the early stages and was one of the launch partners for the google cardboard so we've been within the industry on, on sort of the very early days before it was sort of a mainstream topic so there must be quite a good um pub spiel you know, when you're down the pub and, and you meet new people and they say, oh, what do you do? And you can just like drop, well, you know, we were one of the people that, that inspired some people to make the Oculus Rift and uh, must be quite good. It's, it's, it's an interesting one. I call it the love story because it's sort of the, the love story how me and my father are sort of now business partners and we've been managed, I'm fortunate enough to be working with one another every single day and we get to see each other every single day. To get into. So it is a cool, interesting story to tell. And there's some sort of backstories behind that I'm not going to get into because I'm not too sure legally I'm allowed to. Um, (laughs) But it's an interesting, it was an interesting time. Yeah. So um, uh, there's quite a lot of questions I want to ask. I think let's start off with, uh, because I want to come on to the whole kind of what could it do for a company in a minute. But an immersive experience, um, I have to admit, I haven't sort of put on one of those uh, sort of devices. I did quite a long time ago, but I'm not a regular user of it but what can the immersive experience do for a person you can do so much one of the sort of the telltales especially virtual reality it can teleport you to a different location Mm. if that location is created by someone or actually a a real life 360 degrees video or uh, an actual environment that's been lasered 
specifically, so news and tips and technology from the construction industry mm. um, and actually recreate that in a, in a virtual game engine and allow you to actually walk around that environment as you would do if you were there. So there's really cool, interesting ways. But the main thing is, if you make somebody feel present within the experience, mm. that's when you get the the emotion and that person can have open emotion to that content more than you can do with any other content that's out there. So if I make somebody put into an experience and say I take them to Africa and they can see a village where you can donate money to improve and then you you donate fake money at the time, but then you can see how that village adapts and that community changes and the impact it'll have on these people. And then you can feel good about that, so you feel inspired and then you're more likely to donate on a positive reaction. Mm. And you can do that so effectively and so quickly than you can do in any other medium. One of the things that we like to do is VR walk the plank. Um, so we get someone to click on a on a, in a go into an elevator, press the button, you go up to the top of a skyscraper, and the door, lift doors open, oh, and no. all you get in front of you is a plank oh, no. <laughs> over the side of the building. And in real life, all you're doing is just walking forwards, but because of the animal instinct and your fire flight mode kicks in, your legs will go, and you're like, I can't, I can't walk off this. Mm. I can't walk on this flat plank. And people will, will sometimes not even walk off. And they're just walking straight forward on solid ground. That makes them absolutely fine in real life. But because they can see it virtually and we're, and we're doing psychological tricks on the brain, it can really make somebody feel present and get vertigo or scared of heights or whatever it is. So the key question is, how can we harness that for, for marketing? I mean, what can, uh, what can being able to offer that immersive experience uh, do for a company trying to promote its, its products and services? So if you can make somebody feel present within the experience and you have a branded experience, whatever that may be, and they can actually remember that eight times more than any other type of medium. So if you read something, I think it's, you can remember it up to like 30% or 20%. Yeah. Don't correct them on the exact figures, yeah. but it will go up. So if you add hearing and sight, that will go up, that percentage up even more. If you um, practice it over and over again, that will go up even more. But if you feel present and you can remember it as a, a memory, mm that's when you really get the attention rate of what people do. So you can do some clever things of, say, if you're building, a, you're a house developer and you build, you're building a home, but the building's not yet made, but you're looking to sell or market that property, you can use the information for Revit and the BIM sort of stage and create that virtually in a virtual world and then yeah. sell that home to people before it's actually been made. So you can give virtual tours, a real estate agent can give virtual tours and actually do it that way. So there's so many different ways that you can chop and change. Yeah. Uh, depending on how you like to cut the cheese, how that can it be implemented into a business sense. One of the huge things at the moment is sort of how brands, big corporates can sort of get you to do a point of view 360 degrees video and say, this is what we stand for and do this feel good thing where they show you, they'll take you up a mountain and show you that like, we're really natural and this is all the core cool experience thing and you feel inspired and you feel better value between that because you understand what they've they value it at a point of view yes and you can actually feel like you're you're there with the brand and just that in itself really as a marketing tool can actually enhance somebody's experience and their views on within a brand um people have used it to help team building within the team because they all understand what that team values are mm. can actually put it through social media so customers can actually experience that they can actually show their buyers or suppliers that actually get better rates or even get more i'm not going to say who but a big brewery brands has actually done that to actually get to, to one of their buyers to actually buy more p produce from them just for the fact from one 360 degrees video because you know we like your brand we, we now have a better understanding what you stand for yeah we want to stand for somebody alongside that so we're going to promote and do more work with you so there's so many different ways it's that's what's exciting and that's what's really going to change from just being a interesting cool experience so it's a bit gimmicky to actually take it to the next level and that's yeah. when you get the, the the actual excitement and you get the roi of what you've done there i'm interested in how it's delivered to to the end user because i mean the, you take the traditional sort of you know, i go and visit a website um obviously now we've got mobile so you can you can have apps and things on the mobile phone how is, is is the technology keeping up with with VR? I mean, are there ways of delivering? I mean, you mentioned 360 views. Are there nice ways of delivering that on phones and on websites? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there's multiple ways it can be delivered. Um, and some people tell you some things and some people tell you the other. Mm. Um, so at the moment, you can do the traditional, we can put a 360 degrees video on Facebook, you put it on YouTube. 
but you will never really see that at good enough quality to actually go this is a cool experience mm. uh, the only to actually because you, what you need is 4k content yes if you don't it's like a really pixelated horrible experience and you don't feel present and if you don't feel present then you don't get that marketing side to it of that open of an emotion yeah so youtube they say you can upload it in 4k but if you try and stream a 4k video to your phone it won't happen it will show you in 1080p and if you stretch a 1080p video around you in 360 you'll see it the part you see on the screen would be around about six like 360p or whatever it is like a really low resolution Yeah. yeah Um, so if you do a 360 degrees 4K video, you stretch it around you, you'll see it at 1080p. So the easiest way around that would be creating actually a mobile app where people can download the app and actually view that content on. Yeah. Um, that actually allows you to upload more content at a later date. You can actually have better analytics behind there to see what they're looking at. Are they looking at your brand image at any, at any point? Are they looking at other parts at any point? And get some actual feedback what these people are doing and what they're sort of through, sort of through Google Analytics as well understand what that market person is and get more data behind that as well so it's really interesting to see it's like the next level of analytics coming in but then again you can do the if you're it's sort of pushing content out there if people come to you like a trade show or you're at liverpool street station or you're at another venue and they're coming to try on stuff you can get away with using the high-end stuff and using other senses so there was a really cool marketing campaign for a cheese company yeah so they had different flavors of cheese and what they did, they put a fork on a controller and you're in this virtual uh, VR headset. You hit on one of the cheeses on, with a fork, you put it towards your mouth and as it's about to go to your mouth and you're, it, the cheese is in your mouth, all of a sudden the environment around you changes to that yeah. flavor of cheese. <laughs> so it's this multi-central <laughs> value that you're getting here and it just ma- enhances that experience than you just having a sample thing by <laughs> tenfold. So it's really interesting that sort of Audi have come up with a great app recently. It's called, I think it's Audi Quantro. Yeah. Um, it's only on iOS. But basically what you do is you hold your phone up to the TV, the TV advert, and the Audi rings when that comes up at the end, it acts like a QR code. Yes. The Audi car breaks through your TV into your living room <laughs> and there's smash glass everywhere in the VR thing. But you can see this car like, floating out then you can actually build a track around your living room, around your kitchen, around your house, like a scale electric track, and then drive the different A classes around there, as well as actually put that car or any of the A classes actually on your drive to see what it looks like on your drive. And you can make it miniature, you can make it full scale, yeah. and you can zoom in on all the buttons and knobs on the dashboard. So there is so many different ways you can deploy this medium. It's really the process of, right, Who's your target audience? Who's the stakeholder you're going after? Yeah. Where, where their eye is going to be, as you would do in any other typical marketing. Um, where is it going to be? What is going to be the best methods of deployment? Actually, you know what? Which medium will be better? Would it be a virtual, a virtual reality medium, immersive medium? Would it be an augmented reality one? Would it be a 360 degrees video that could be promoted on Facebook, for an example? Yeah. And then you can chop and change on what that is. And then you can actually really create something that's been designed for your target market, for the right stakeholder in the right place. So there is more levels to the onion than that. I think at the moment, the standard of what people are producing is just not at a high enough quality. And that's why sometimes there's a bad taste in the mouth or there's some brands that are a bit hesitant to jump on the bandwagon, A, for a lack of knowledge, or it's just because they've been stung before. Yes. And it's really because the people seen the £2 billion Facebook acquisition of Oculus, of the Oculus Rift, people think it's a wash with money. And it's very much feast or famine. So you've got to be careful with if to who you talk to and if they're just trying to sell you something because at the end of the day, they have to pay their developers or if actually this is going to enhance your, your offering that you give to your business or to your customers or whoever it is that you're trying to build the, the project around. Now, I, I love the stories about, about uh, the Audi coming right around your room and driving around a track that you've built around your tell us i want to hear another story because you mentioned actually before we pressed the record button about the uh the south pole thing tell us about that so it's a um it was one of two he owns one of these companies well they used to should i say um they actually sold up that whole department of special holidays but it's a fifteen thousand pound trip to the south pole so you get to see the penguins you get to go see all the ice caps you get to see all that kind of stuff as well yeah Um, the problem is it's such a unique holiday 
how do you get people interested to actually go there if barely anyone's ever visited or know what it's really like? It was yeah. effectively on the, just a snow desert. So what we created was this uh, high-end application, VR app, where people can download the application and actually have a, have a teaser holiday to see what it's looked like. Nice. So you get to go on the boat that you're going to be on for two weeks. You get to see the cabin you're going to be staying in. You get to see the shower room and the shower head because people do get a bit funny and want to know what type of civilities there are. Sure. You get to see the buffet and the food and the entertainment that's going to be on the, on the boat. Then you get to see when you actually get there to get, get off the boat and actually go see all the penguins and meet all the penguins. Um, you get to go on the Zodiacs and all the other cool activities you get to do. So it was a very particular thing. And for them, they're using it as a medium because they don't feel like any other medium will capture the brilliance and the, the spectacular trip that actually is to go down there. Yeah. So it was a great sort of marketing campaign that they did to be able to get people interested in the holiday to actually book. So for our listeners, some of whom might be thinking about this possibly as, as a, an element of their online marketing, what sort of top tip or sort of key takeaway would you give? I would be careful. It, it's a powerful medium and it's still at the early days of being a mainstream topic. So be careful who you're speaking with in the sense of that they're not just trying to sell you something. They actually are trying to add you value. They're not just doing it because they've just started out and they're trying to make a bit of money to keep the ball rolling. But explore it. There's a lot of learning to do, um, especially with people in sort of organizations of seeing how they can actually use it. One of the big things that we do is sort of discovery days where we sort of come in as a consultant rather than actually trying to sell you stuff. Mm. So you can get hands-on experience of what that is as well as being able to play around with the tech and actually brainstorm what your offering could be. So you can make an informed decision of actually moving down on, or not doing, or should you do it in a year's time or two years time or five years time, where Canberra it is. Yes. Yeah. So get excited about the technology because it's here and it can be adopted today. It can happen today, but be careful who you're speaking with because you don't want to put this big investment down of, of using it and then not get the reward that you're actually looking to get. Well, Jack, thanks so much for joining us today. How can our listeners find out more about you and more about VR Craftworks? Um, I'm on Twitter. Anyone can DM me on Twitter. Um, it's Jack Madalena. That's uh, M-A-D-D-A-L-E-N-A. -E -E anyone can contact me on my LinkedIn. My contact details are on LinkedIn. Then again, if you go to our website, vrcraftworks.com, if you fill out the form, that form goes straight to me and we can have an email conversation but I would love to hear your thoughts on what you thought of this podcast. And uh, if you've got any questions at all, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Jack. And thanks for our listeners for listening. Show notes are at sitevisibility.co.uk slash impost. If you're enjoying the show, um, please leave us a review. That would be great. Questions and suggestions. The email is podcast at sitevisibility.co.uk. You can tweet at sitevisibility. We've got a site visibility group on LinkedIn. That's all from me, Andy, and it's all from Jack. Thank you for having me on the show, and thank you, guys. Absolute pleasure, Jack, and we'll see you next time on Internet Marketing. Bye. Bye.